A new era of Massachusetts basketball is underway in Amherst as head coach Frank Martin has begun rebuilding the Minuteman program both on and off the court. Excitement growing daily in Amherst as what coach Martin, his staff and his players might be able to accomplish. And with that, we welcome you inside Legacy Hall here at the John Francis Kennedy Champion Center in Amherst. Jay Burnham alongside Adam Frenier. And we've got a lot in store for you over the next 30 minutes. We're going to dive into what this recruiting class looks like for Massachusetts basketball. We're also going to visit with a coach and a player from UMass basketball. But first, Adam, let's start at the top. Five transfers, two freshmen as it stands right now, incoming for this class. We'll dive into what they might bring to the table, but just overall, a general excitement as to what Massachusetts basketball might be again. This is going to be one of the most anticipated seasons in several years for this UMass basketball program. You know, this is a terrific hire, you know, getting Frank Martin, somebody of his stature, of his experience here in Amherst, somebody of his excitement level too. He's full of passion, he's full of energy. I think it's already started to rub off a little bit on the fan base. You know, they're getting behind this UMass team very quickly and, you know, they can't wait for early November to come up. We can't wait for early November to come up. And, you know, it should be a very interesting, and exciting season when the ball does go up into the air at the Mullen Center. And when you look at Coach Martin, his credentials, his relationships that he has along not only with his staff but uh, players in the world of the transfer portal, those relationships that you have built over the course of your career come into a high focus because you were able to bring guys in and change around a program quickly. And being able to have somebody with all of that experience and you know, all that, all the recruiting that he's been able to do over the years, you know, he has all those contacts and, you know, we'll hear from him about that coming up in a little bit, but, you know, certainly that has really aided the process as this roster has been rebuilt. Five transfers, two freshmen might seem like a lot of change, but what the UMass basketball team does have is some guys they were able to rely upon over the past several seasons, and that includes Noah Fernandes and TJ Weeks, both returning this upcoming fall. And, you know, when you add those pieces to the puzzle that Coach Martin is building, I mean, those are two of some of the best pieces in the A-10 coming back here to play at, at UMass. Well, Noah Fernandes certainly was the heart and soul of this UMass team last season. He's the guy who doesn't mind having the basketball when the clock is running down and the game is on the line. He can put a team on his shoulders and carry it quite a long way. He's an excellent defender as well, a great all-around player that probably should have been on one of the Atlantic 10 all-conference teams at the end of last season but was left off. He's going to be one of the best guards in the Atlantic 10 this season. And then you have TJ Weeks who shot 37% from three-point range last season, averaged nearly 10 points a game, and with a touch more consistency and good health, he could be a real impact player for this UMass squad as well. And one of the items that Coach Martin is trying to bring to the table here is size and toughness. And when you look at some of the guys that are incoming, that size and toughness can not only it help, but also make a player like Fernandes just that much better because he might have someone to throw the ball up to at the basket <laughs> and that can slam it through. So we'll hear from Wildens Levesque, who's one of the big transfers that is coming in as part of this class. And uh, we'll hear from him down the line. But overall, adding that size and toughness certainly doesn't hurt. Well, the Atlantic 10 over the last couple of years has featured several very good big men and will continue to do that this season. And having somebody like Wildens Levesque, who's six foot ten, has just a plethora of SEC experience. You know, he's going to be one of the best, best big men in the Atlantic 10 this season, I believe. And, you know, certainly that's something that UMass is going to need to compete with the likes of Davidson and Dayton and all the rest. You ready to get into it? Let's do it. All right. We're going to hear from head coach Frank Martin in just a little bit. But earlier on this offseason, four Massachusetts coaches formed the coaches caravan and traveled across the Commonwealth. And here are some of the highlights and shenanigans that took place on the inaugural Canop Caravan. We'll be back with Frank Martin after this on the UMass Sports Network. What's the most frequent question you get from fans or have gotten from fans for you? And then we'll go to, to Coach Brown as well. What happened to your hair? <laughs> By the way, what are you guys doing with the old turf? I know where a piece of it can go. <laughs> you got to have great culture. Um, and when you look at it, the one thing that I think that we have in our programs and will continue to have is a culture where our players aren't leaving. You know, yes, we may be grabbing some players from different programs, 
but our best players are staying home. And that says a lot about our program. It says a lot about the athletic department and what we're doing at the University of Massachusetts. That size is what separates. And I think I'm no longer the biggest guy in the gym. And, and I think that's going to be a strength of our team. Right. Finding games to play right now is really, really hard for us because we have power five schools that will not come to the Mullen Center to play us. Doc Rivers has one of the greatest lines I've ever heard. He says, recruit R's, not S's. And I said, what are you talking about? R's, not S's. He said, recruit character, not characters. When you look at and you see where they placed all of us, I just want to make this known. You know, obviously they placed Frank right next to me because they, they want to rub some of this good luck and, and some of this winning off on him. All right. And then obviously the same thing with Coach Brown. All right. <laughs> Rubbing off on Coach oh. Carvel. So, you know, they got some. And it was a blast on our coach's caravan. And of course it was a blast because we had this man, Coach Frank Martin and Coach, uh, thanks for taking the time. I know you had a lot of fun on the caravan across the state. That was great, Jay. It was great being around. And, you know, Tory Verdi was the kind of personality on the, on the stage every night. And I was the butt of uh, his jokes <laughs> up there. And that's what makes it fun is that, that it allows the fans uh, to see that we're normal people, man. We love to laugh. We love to joke. We're not just like these maniacs that people think we are, that we're just chasing wins. Uh, but it was a great time. Great, great being around you guys. And uh, uh, hats off to, to Ryan and Dave and George and you for, for putting those events together. And one of the reasons why we're doing stuff like this is because we want the fans to see kind of the roster that you're assembling and, yep. and the guys that are coming here to play at UMass. So before we get into kind of the specifics of the players that have committed to play here, give us an overview as to how you've seen this puzzle kind of come <laughs> together. Five transfers, two freshmen, a lot of open spots, but you've been able to bring them in. It's uh, uh, spring recruiting. Uh, it, it, it's not, it used to be unique to when you change jobs. Now it's unique for everybody. It's a new dynamic uh, because of uh, the whole transfer environment we live in now and uh, um, trying to figure out back in the day, you can kind of say, okay, in the junior class, I need a point guard and a center. In the sophomore class, I need two shooters. So you can kind of pre-plan. Now it's like every spring, it's exactly what you said. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. And you're trying to say, okay, well, if he stays, then we need this piece. But if he leaves, then we need this piece. And it's... Gotten kinds. It, it makes recruiting in the spring fun because you're you're trying to put it together, uh, but at the same time, um, uh, it, it's it's made the dynamic different. But I'm excited. I think we've identified uh, young people that are going to fit us. We we knew most of them because we had recruited them previously, um, so so there was already a, a connection with them uh, as people. Uh, and uh, it was just a matter of uh, selling them on UMass and why this would be a great opportunity for them. Coach, we'll start off with Wildens Levesque, who came with you yeah. from South Carolina, the big guy from Brockton, a battle-tested six-foot-ten center from SEC land. You know, he's had a lot of experience playing in Power Five basketball. What can we expect from him? He's uh, uh, fans are going to love him. Uh, people on campus are going to love him. He's he's a, a just a wonderful human being. Uh, he's worked his tail off to, to make himself, uh, you know, we, we, we sit there. He, he was a two-year starter um, on a SEC team that won 18 games. That was a 500 SEC team, which, uh, which means it's a good basketball team. It's, uh, uh, he, he, uh, he was playing his best basketball for us at the end of the year, too. Uh, and uh, then the whole job change took place, so you got the unknown. But... I'm excited. He brings a maturity, a toughness, a work ethic, a humility uh, that's fun to be around. And uh, uh, we're going to try and build this program on his shoulders. We're going to hear from Wildens Levesque later on in the show. And he comes with you along with another teammate from South Carolina. I know you had talked about earlier during, the, during your hiring that you needed to get bigger. Yeah. What you did with Levesque and then Taquan Woodley, who also <laughs> comes yeah. with some size and fanfare. Tell us about him. Yeah, you know, uh, Taquan's uh, uh, just an uh, incredible person, the, the journey that he's been in life to, uh, to get to the place that he's at. But those two guys, uh, as soon as I took the job, 
uh, they immediately called me and says, hey, we're in, we're in. I said, well, you got to be in the portal, man. I, just, <laughs> like, I can't be talking to you right now. But they're loyal, they're honest. Uh, you know, TQ was too heavy when he got to us last year. Um, but he, he worked to get back in shape, and he did. And he was our first big guy off the bench on that team that I just referred to earlier as a true freshman. And um, uh, he's going to be tremendous. He brings a toughness. He's 200 and 55, 60 pounds, great hands, great passer, uh, and brings a, a, a toughness with a unique mind uh, that, uh, that, that that teammates love to be around and coaches love to throw out there and turn them loose because he's so competitive. And that moves us along, Coach, to Matt Cross, a six foot seven, another Massachusetts native from Beverly by way of a one of the premier prep programs in New England at Brewster Academy. Yeah. He's another guy with a lot of Power Five experience in the ACC, both at Louisville and before that Miami. Yeah, Matt, I, 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 uh, I, I really thought Matt was coming to South Carolina out of high school. It's, uh, uh, we, we spent a lot of time with Matt and uh, with his family, and, uh, um, but it didn't happen, you know? And, you know, we don't, recruiting, you get told no a lot more than you get told yes. And uh, the best part for me, and recruiting is that you end up meeting like really, really f great people, whether they played for you or not. The Cross family is one of that, those families. And uh, as soon as I got the, I, I did not recruit him when he left Louisville, excuse me, when he left Miami. Um, uh, and for no reason other than I knew I had some uncertainties in South Carolina and we, our families, we had become friends. And I, I couldn't recruit him and not guarantee him that I was gonna be the coach there. Uh, but as soon as I got hired here, it's one of the first phone calls I made. And uh, uh, just like Taekwon, just like Wilden's pre-established relationship, uh, it was about getting them here, the Cross family, Matt and his family, uh, so we can look each other in the eye, so we can have those conversations, and then they, so they can look at it, feel it, and say, this is where I want to play. And just like the other two guys, he left his visit and committed a couple days after. So it's a uh, uh, really, really excited to have Matt. You're talking about three guys that are established high major basketball players uh, that all possess a toughness and a work ethic that we want to build our program around. Coach, here at Massachusetts, I think you know we like to steal from UConn if, uh, if it's available. And Rasul Diggins is, is an example of that, a transfer coming over, now be a sophomore from the Philadelphia region. Former top 50 recruit. When you see a guy with, with his accolades that maybe didn't get the playing time yeah. where he was as a freshman, what does that mean to you and what do you think he could become? Yeah, I, Rasul played for, for a dear friend of mine um, uh, at Archbishop Wood in Philly. And uh, so I saw Rasul play a bunch in high school and I didn't recruit him because I knew Rasul was not going south. He was going to stay in the Northeast. And, and uh, but I think Russell's a really good player, uh, can really shoot it, has a great mind for the game. Uh, he's a competitor. He's a Philly kid that, you know, if you know anything about Philly kids in basketball, there's a certain sense of competitiveness that they bring uh, to the plate every day. And uh, um, again, as uh, soon as his name, I got a call the day before he went in the portal uh, from uh, one of his guys in Philadelphia asking, hey, if he goes, would you be interested? I said, heck yeah. So the next day he went in the portal. And as soon as he went in the portal, I called. And then uh, I, I had not recruited him. I had not recruited him. So he and I didn't have an established relationship uh, until this time around. But because we got numerous people that are very dear to him and his family who are very good friends of mine, uh, we were able to establish a trust factor fairly quick. And uh, Again, Rasul, another high-level player that, that we're excited uh, uh, to have out there. And as a guard, uh, he's the guy that controls the game, just like our fans know about Noel Fernandez. Yeah. I don't know the one like that, that the guys that control the game. You've got to have good guards to win games. Well, Jay, you mentioned taking someone from UConn. How about taking one from Boston College? And even G better. <laughs> even better. And Gianni Thompson, another prep kid, another kid from Massachusetts by way of Newton. Got a taste of ACC action last year, coach, against Boston College. What do you like about him? Uh, size, athleticism, again, uh, humility, um, uh, a, a desire to be here. 
he considers Wilden's one of his closest friends. Um, uh, I saw Gianni play a bunch in high school. Again, I did not recruit Gianni because I did not think Gianni would come down south. I thought Gianni wanted to stay up in this pocket of the country, which I fully understood. Uh, but uh, again, uh, Wilden's commits to us, and, and uh, uh, I got a call that Gianni was going in the portal. And as uh, soon as he went in the portal, I picked up the phone and called him. And he came to campus the next day, uh, spent, I don't know, probably three hours with us here on campus. Uh, called me uh, a couple days after that. He goes, hey, I, I don't think I want to visit anywhere else. I said, well, just make sure. I'm big in recruiting. I don't want you to just come here because it sounds right. I want you to come here because your heart tells you what's right. That's the way I do things in recruiting. And, and he says, no, 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 I, I want to be there and I want to play for you. I want to be around Wildens and I want to be coached by you. And, uh, and it's Massachusetts, it's his state. So he, he gets to run up and down the court and surround his heart, Wildens, him, Matt Cross. Think about this. Every time those guys play, they surround their heart the name of where they're from with the name of who brought them here. And, and that's a powerful thing for these in-state guys that get to wear Massachusetts on their chest. And, and, uh, um, and Gianni's no different. He, uh, he brings size, athleticism, uh, and, and, and a skill. Well, Coach, I know there's a lot of fans that when they hear you say that, Massachusetts across the front, guys from this area, it means a lot for them. So uh, we will talk about the transfers, by the way, which this whole class isn't fully done yet, so as we're recording this, uh, there, there, there will be another name or two that you might hear. But those are the five uh, transfers coming in at the moment. Matt Cross, Roseville Diggins, Wildens, Lebeck, Gianni Thompson, and Taquan Woodley. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll keep Coach here, and we'll talk about, hey, there's still freshmen in the game of college basketball, right? UMass has at least two of them coming in. We'll dive into them next when we return from Legacy Hall. There is no better coach and no better time than right now. Ladies and gentlemen, our head coach, Frank Martin. Massachusetts basketball is back. And we're going to play harder than any team that ever plays against us. We're going to be more disciplined than any team that ever plays against us. It's a new era with an old-fashioned attitude. I'm excited, baby! Come be a part of the Frank Martin era in UMass basketball with a season ticket deposit. Deposits are being taken right now at 866-UMASS-TIX or visit umassathletics.com slash tickets. Go UMass! Well, obviously, a lot of excitement around the new roster that's being built here on campus. We'll continue on our signing period show with Coach Frank Martin. And Coach, before we talk about the individual freshmen that uh, have committed to play here, you know, what is the role of freshmen in today's world of college basketball? And, and how do you utilize them when, as we talked about earlier, building this whole puzzle out? Yeah, I think it's still a huge part of uh, building a program. Uh, some people say, well, we're just going to recruit transfers. Uh, we got to find the right freshmen to come in here and, uh, uh, and, and grow and compete. And, and it goes back to recruiting them for the whole experience, not just the basketball component, meaning that being here is something that's really, really important to them. That way they don't judge their experience just based on how many minutes they play or how many points they score. And, um, uh, you know, and that's, that's a, a big, big part of it. I, I'm, I'm a big freshman guy. I, I, the, the reason I got into coaching was to watch um, young kids through basketball grow up to become men. And, uh, and, and being a part of that experience as they go through it is what makes me, I know I don't look at it anymore, Jay, but it's kind of what makes me feel young, is uh, watching those young kids go through that journey and makes me reminisce when I was young and the mistakes I made and it helps me continue to learn to be patient and teach as they go through their mistakes and their growth. Uh, so eventually at 22, 23, they step out into life and become men. Coach, let's start with RJ Lewis Jr. out of Mount Zion Prep in Miami, right from where you're from. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, RJ's, uh, I think our fans are going to love him. Uh, he's, uh, he's an aggressive player, uh, highly skilled offensively ultra competitive. He's in that six, 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 seven range, really big hands, uh, has a knack for scoring, has a knack for playmaking, um, and uh, uh, can rebound the ball from the guard spot. 
Obviously, when your guards can rebound on offense, it gets you extra shots. And on defense, it eliminates the outlet pass, which means now everybody can take off and run, which we, we're going to be a fast team on offense. Uh, so having someone like RJ around is uh, going to be a, a, a tremendous uh, dynamic uh, for our basketball program. And then so competitive defensively uh, that the way we play with denying passing lanes and trying to extend people's offense, push them out to the half court line, uh, guys that have possesses length and competitiveness become very successful. Coach, RJ had said this throughout his recruiting process. He said, I'm looking for player development. Would like to play early in college, but my decision will be about trust and not the level. So how did you establish that trust with him early on? And what does it mean for you when he says he wants to be developed, that he's going to come here and play for your program? Well, it, it's, uh, you, you, you know, kids are awesome. They, they, they say these, you know, they read stuff and then they repeat it. And then as an adult, we can either say, well, he said that. But if you pay attention to what they do, it doesn't connect with the words. And then we act surprised, like, hey, you lied to him. He didn't lie. He doesn't know what he was talking about. Well, with RJ, when he says that, if you pay attention to his, his career, his growth from 9th to 10th, 11th to 12th grade in high school was tremendous. He just continued getting better. When guys show that in high school, they're going to continue to do that in college. And that's where RJ's words connect with his actions. And that's, that's why I, when I'm sit here, Jay, and I say, you know, we're all going to really enjoy watching him play. That's where I'm going from. Because he's really talented, but he's got to drive to get better. And those are the guys that are fun to be around. The second freshman of this class is Keon Thompson. And we show some of these highlights of him and, and, and some of the photo shoots. This guy doesn't look like a freshman <laughs> at all. Six foot one, Hargrave Military Academy, which has produced a, t a ton of great players. You know, what have been the, the things that jump off the page about Keon Thompson and, and what he might bring to your program? Athleticism. Holy cow. Uh, being, I, I mean, it, there's a lot of times, and in recruiting, you sit in the stands and you watch somebody play, and you don't realize the, mm, that they play with or the athleticism that they possess. And then you recruit them or they lack one or the other. And then you recruit them and now you're actually in practices with them in workouts. And, and, and you're like, man, this guy isn't competitive enough or he's not athletic enough. With Keon, it's a complete opposite. I mean, everything I saw from an athleticism standpoint, I had no idea that he had another gear that he can go to. And, uh, and then he, he plays with an aggression. Uh, he's gonna have some highlights. Uh, that are going to be up for UMass to show for years and years and years. I mean, he, I think he's going to be an elite on-ball defender, elite. And, uh, and then offensively, he's got great feel, has great knowledge. Uh, he's been, both of those freshmen, they've been raised the right way. Their families have raised them the right way. They're humble, but yet fearless. Um, but Keon... Keon's going to, like, people don't, like, he will jump up and bang it on your head, and you have no idea it's coming because he's so athletic and so determined to get to the rim. Coach, you have, obviously, a pretty veteran roster of all the transfers and the players that remained here from last season. How do you try to get the new players, the freshmen, into the rotation and get them up to speed as quick as you can? Yeah, I've always, uh, uh, I don't, I tell players this all the time, and I remind them almost daily. Their job is to make my job really hard. What makes my job really hard is that if all 13 are forcing me to play them, that makes my job hard. That's what their job is, is make my job hard. If they don't go to class, they don't compete, they don't listen, then they're making my job easy. I don't play them. Um, and, uh, but I've, I've, I've never worried about what guys to put in there. I'm a true believer that uh, you, you, you put expectations on people, you give them responsibility, you invest trust in them, and then ask them to compete with each other, not against each other. And then you get through the season and everyone helps the team as the year goes on. Uh, but these two freshmen are fun. And they're, they're, they both did a postgraduate year. So they're not 17 year old kids. They're a little older, uh, so they're a little more mature. And, and I think, uh, it's still early. I got no idea, but watching them in some of our workouts here this summer, uh, I think those two guys will find a way on the court. 
Coach, congratulations on the first class that you've assembled. I know there's more to come, and we've got associate head coach Alan Edwards coming up next, who Good. played for you way back in the day, Ooh. and now he's on your staff. So Ooh. I guess you're doing something right, guys. Uh, keep coming around from all your relationships of years oh, beyond. Oh, Jay, I, it, it's fun. You know, he's he. I started coaching Alan, who was nine years old, and now he's 46, and he's on my staff and been a head coach. I, but every time I look at him tells me how old I am, and that's not fun. Well, let's see what Coach Edwards has to say, what it's like to play for this man. He joins us next here from Legacy Hall. is back in Amherst and UMass football is entering a whole new era. Now's your chance to get in on the ground floor with season tickets for 2022. Securing season tickets for the year requires just a $50 deposit today. Season ticket holders receive a ticket to every home game in 2022 and parking in lot 22 all for only $125 per seat. Get in on the ground floor and reserve your seats for a new wave of UMass football. Just go to umassathletics.com slash tickets to make your deposit today. Go UMass! continue on our signing period show here at Legacy Hall with associate head coach Alan Edwards. Coach, good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. How you doing? I'm doing great. No problem. Glad to be here. Five transfers so far, two freshmen as mm -hmm. it stands when we record this. You know, what is your overall impression of, of how that group can make an impact on Massachusetts basketball? Well, you know, in a very short period of time, uh, getting them out on the floor and being able to work with them. Um, again, I'm new to the situation, even, you know, though I've known coach for all my life. Um, the team that we've assembled, this is our, my first time being around them, uh, even Big Wildens. But I've been impressed with the makeup of the team that we were able to put together in a short, uh, in a short period of time. It, you say it's your first time here, obviously, but mm -hmm. not in terms of the A-10. You have a mm -hmm. background with VCU. Yes. You know, how can you utilize some of that experience that you have at this level to transition to, to here at UMass? Well, you know, I just think when you, when you start talking basketball, and I think it's become a little bit more balanced, you know, even when we start talking levels. You know, I, I, I get more caught up in, you know, who's running the program and how it operates. And the time that I spent with Anthony Grant at VCU and throughout my career, now being here with Coach Frank Martin and just watching basketball uh, in general, um, I just think all of that um, has helped me to embody the scenario and situation being with Coach and just having a feel for talent level and you know what, you know what, I don't want to say what it needs, but what when you take advantage of it, what it could be when you bring the right guys into your program. You just said earlier that you've known Coach Martin your whole life. Mm -hmm. Give us the uh, Cliff Notes version of, you know, where you guys began and, and how that relationship blossomed. Well, uh, when I say my whole life, I mean, Coach has coached me since I was like 10 years old. And, you know, I tell people all the time, everybody, you know, especially when we had just got through winning, uh, playing in the Final Four, you know, most young coaches would say, or people would say, oh man, I would want to be Frank Martin. And I would say, no, nah, not really, because you don't know what he's, you know, came through. You know, ri riding around with 10 year olds, you know, in a very, he had a little small white car one time and a small little red car. And we're sitting on each other, some in the trunk, but we we're going from game to game. Yeah. But that was just his passion for this game of basketball. And then I later on played uh, junior varsity. Uh, in high school at Miami High, and he was my head coach then. Um, so the growth from coaching me as a 10-year-old ten, kid to now see what he's been able to do with this profession and how many kids' lives, you know, he's been able to impact, myself included, it just speaks on how very special of a human being he is. When you talk about the style that mm -hmm. he plays or that your staff will, <laughs> will see on the floor, give, give our fans some insight as to you know, what that will look like stylistically. <laughs> well, you, you know what, it's funny, he was just talking to the group after practice of the day, and you know, the one thing he, he said to our guys that, you know, we're not gonna get out of the way. 
you know, and he said, I don't care. <laughs> My teams, we're never going to get out of the way. Now, we're not going to bring fights to you, but we ain't getting out of the way from anybody. And I think um, that's a mindset when you're talking about going uh, and going forward. And he emphasizes, you know, the work that we do in the weight room uh, to be one of the strongest teams, you know, not only in the A-10, but throughout the country. So when you're watching a Frank Martin, and I've watched from afar as well, a Frank Mar Martin basketball team, you're going to see a physical group. Uh, you're going to see a tenacious group. Um, you're going to see a group that defends and rebounds the basketball on both ends of the floor. And then opportunities on the offensive end to share and just play with a little bit more freedom. When you say that size and that ability to kind of get in the way, that does, does that mean bigger, stronger, or does it just mean a, a, a mindset as well? It doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have to be the, yeah. the largest team out there. Well, don't, don't get me wrong now. I don't mean we want to be out there looking like football players, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we still want to be mobile. We still want to be agile. We still want to be able to get up and down the floor. But I think it, it goes hand in hand, you know, because I've seen big guys with not the mindset to follow it. And then I've seen smaller guys that had the mindset to go out there and play with that physicality. I'm just saying it, it was trying to put both of those things together, utilizing the weight room, but also getting to them mentally to understand what it's going to take from a, from a standpoint of fight, because everything is about an inch. You know, when you're talking about winning and losing basketball games, sometimes it comes down to that inch. You know, you've got an established career as a player mm -hmm. and coach, head coach uh, at Wyoming, yep. tournament experience. When you see, we're talking about incoming classes now, a majority of it being transfers, yeah. which is not uncommon, but yeah. there are also a couple of freshmen yeah. that are already on the docket here for this mm -hmm. class. How do they mix in with that experience, and what is that life like for them when they're coming in with most everyone else already having played? Well, you know what, this, this situation is unique because we're all new. You know, so they're coming in not only with a new staff, but they're coming in with new guys. So everybody's kind of starting from the same yeah. finish line. So if you were to walk out there and watch our practice, you know, Keon looks like he, he's, a, he's already a junior. If physically, if you look at him, and RJ, when you look at RJ, I mean, his length, he has some Scottie Pippen, you know, type of length in him. So you wouldn't say, oh, those two guys are freshmen. You know, I think they gel right in with our guys. So they've been doing a great job getting in the weight room, again, along with the transfers uh, that have been at this level. But, you know, normally when you take over a program, you can always say, oh, that kid's, you know, usually. I, I, don't, I don't see that with these two guys. I think they have, <laughs> I think both of them have a chance to be really good, actually. Coach. Thanks so much. We look forward to talking to you throughout the season. No problem. I appreciate it. All right. That is associate head coach Alan Edwards. When we return, we'll be joined by one of the newcomers, the big man on campus, Wildens Levesque, sits down with us next here from Legacy Hall on the UMass Basketball Signing Period Show. And we continue on our basketball special show with one of the new recruits here for UMass, Wildens Levesque. And uh, Wildens, thanks for taking the time. Good to see you. No problem. Thank you. Well, you're back home, right? You're back here in the Commonwealth. Give us a little bit of insight as to, you know, what went into your decision to, to make in the transition from South Carolina to coming back here to Massachusetts. Yeah, um, I heard a lot of rumors of Frank Martin coming down to UMass, and I just really... I really got my interest high. You know, I had other schools recruiting me, and um, I felt my heart. I prayed about it, and um, I just I felt that like coming to UMass was the best thing for me, especially with Frank Martin and uh, my comfortability with uh, Massachusetts. What's it like to play for Coach Martin? It's really exciting. You learn a lot about yourself. You you just it's a lot of character development throughout the season. You know, you, having a coach to push you every single day at your best is just I'm really blessed to have someone like that in my life to keep me going and pushing me to be the best player I can be, and not as just a player, but just as a person. You've only been here a short amount of time, but you know what's been the feeling for you, the, the vibe, kind of trying to mesh all these new pieces uh, together quickly? Yeah, um, it's just really exciting, you know, just you got new players, you got a lot of skill around us, you know, the whole team is just really excited and just hopefully we pray that everyone's in the buy-in so we can win a couple games. How would you describe your style of play on the court? Um, I'm very physical. I just I play really hard. I try and get a motor. 
rebounding, you know, making open shots and getting my teammates open, heavy screens and just being a big presence on the court. You know, speaking of teammates, you arrive here at Massachusetts with a guy you played with at South Carolina, Taquan Woodley. Give us some insight as to what we might expect to see from him, who he is as a, as a basketball player and, and, and what he can do. Yeah, TQ, he gives us an identity. He gives us an identity of toughness. You know, we love to play with TQ on the court because he's a teammate that will pick you up and he will do the dirty stuff and he gives us a sense of identity and toughness. And and you see that. you've also got a couple of guys that you sort of know from just being around the New England area growing up here with Noah Fernandes and, and TJ Weeks. So um, have you been able to kind of introduce yourself to them and, and what do you know of them from your time kind of prior to? Yeah, you know, we, you know, we all played in the area of Massachusetts, you know, Matt Cross, DeAndre, Gianni, they all from Massachusetts. And um, coming here, it was almost just like I already knew them before, you know, it's, I haven't spoken to them. But like coming here, we just built a relationship, which is easy because we're all from the same area. We played against each other. You just listed guys, as you mentioned, that are from the Commonwealth. Is there a drive maybe a little bit more for you guys that are from here to say, hey, we want Massachusetts, we want to wear it proudly, and, and we want to get this thing going in the right direction? Yeah, for sure. That's just a goal for all of us. We just want to change this place around, you know, we want to make this a powerhouse for New England, and we just, by doing that, we have to start somewhere. What, in terms of things off the court, interests you? What are some of the items that you've been studying and, and will continue to, to get involved with here at Massachusetts? Um, you know, I'm a big believer in God and um, my faith, and I just really want to learn more about God. And I just really want to connect with students here and uh, get to know them and, you know, just create a network you know, people in Massachusetts, because I'm from Massachusetts, I'm from Brockton, Massachusetts, and I'm just really excited to do that. Would you consider yourself a leader? Yes, sir. What goes into being a, a good leader, not only on the court, but off the court? The um, thing I value a lot being a leader is having trust, having faith, you know, always staying consistent and assertive with what I do, you know, loving what I do, which is coming in here every day and having to do my job. And doing my job is whatever coach asks me, whatever I think I have to do. Well, then, it's been a pleasure to get to know you. Hopefully, we'll do this a lot more throughout the season. Uh, good luck, and we'll talk to you down the line. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, that'll do it for us here from Legacy Hall. Big thanks to everybody for joining us on our Massachusetts basketball signing period show. For all of our guests, my co host Adam Frenier, Will Dinslevac, and more. Until next time, from Amherst, my name's Jay Burnham saying so long, everybody.